Hello. Welcome to Vermont State House Headliners. My name is Guy Page. I'm the host and producer of this show. This is our first show. And Headliners is all about letting people know about the bills that are in the Vermont State House. I've been a lobbyist and a journalist, and I've written a lot about the legislature, but I realized that a lot of people don't know, maybe don't really care, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes what they read in the paper or they hear in the news. So I figured I would just run off a list of the bills that have been introduced into the Vermont State House this year, and we'd talk about some of them. A little bit about myself. I live in Berlin, Vermont native, married, three adopted children, uh, like to go walking on Berlin Pond. I'm a uh, Berlin JP. And by the way, is it Berlin or Berlin? I've heard different things from people who were born and raised here. So if some of you have any uh, insight into that, I would welcome hearing it. Uh, you should be seeing my email address somewhere in the screen, and I welcome any input, including how to pronounce the name of the town that I live in, uh, but also on the legislation that, that comes up. And if you want to receive our daily column that we produce, Vermont State House Headliners, please just send along uh, a request by email, and we'd be glad to add you to the list. It's completely free. Yeah. Okay. So let's get going. Uh, Bill H-113 would expand the beverage container deposit redemption system. Right now it's just, you know, beer and soda, pretty much. Well, this would add uh, water bottles, wine bottles, containers for all non-carbonated and carbonated drinks, except for milk, rice milk, soy milk, almond milk, hemp seed milk, I didn't know there was a hemp seed milk, and dairy products. I did a little bit of research on why people are for and against it. Uh, one of the concerns I hear uh, is that the uh, back in the day when these laws were passed, there was a real problem of ditches just being full of, of containers. And no one is recycling anything back then. But now uh, the argument goes, well, a lot of people just sort of recycle naturally because we've been kind of trained to it. Uh, and so maybe it's not quite as necessary, they say. And it's kind of cumbersome and it's expensive. And uh, I will say that uh, last fall, I was walking a lot uh, around the street, the roads of Berlin and Barry and Montpelier. And I picked up 1,600 bottles and cans. And most of them were, uh, well, actually Bud Light was definitely the most popular brand. Uh, but a lot, lot of beer, a lot of soda, but there were quite a few non-returnables. There's certain kinds of hard cider, believe it or not. I, I never realized, but these, this hard, hard cider you can buy, uh, no, you don't get your nickel back on that one. So uh, there's definitely, uh, you might say, people do, do, are maybe more likely to throw these away uh, if they don't get their nickel back. So. Take all that for what it's worth. Uh, I also know that the businesses, the stores, convenience stores, they're very willing to help out in this. Uh, I would describe to them all the, all the containers I was finding, and they'd say, look, anything we can do to make our roads cleaner and, and safer to be on, uh, just let us know. So that's one bill. H111. This is an interesting one. Creates a Women's Health Stabilization Fund to support Planned Parenthood of Northern New England and offset any decrease in the amount of federal funding received in fiscal year 2019. Monies deposited into the fund shall comprise revenues from a tax imposed on manufacturers of erectile dysfunction drugs. That's uh, Representative Mike Marwicki from the southern part of the state. And I guess the idea there is that if the federal government decides to uh, reduce any funding for New England's Planned Parenthood organization, 
he's saying it should be offset with a tax on uh, ED drugs. Now, all of these bills, they're just, they've been introduced into the Vermont House. Once they're introduced, they get sent to a committee. And there's nothing that says that that committee has to then take it up, look at it, study it, pass it along uh, for another vote by the House and then have it move over to the Senate. No, it can just hang out on the wall, as they say. It's, it's, it's up on the wall. And that means uh, the committee hasn't discussed it yet. And a lot of bills at the end of the session, which is usually you know, four or five months long, they're still up on the wall. So there's, there's no rule of law that says that just because a bill is introduced, it's going to become law. In fact, most of them don't. Picture uh, those little turtles uh, in their thousands trying to get into the sea, and only a few of them make it. That is kind of what it's like with, with bills in the legislature. Uh, maybe, I don't know, one in 50. Uh, Something like that, anyway. One in 50, one in 20 actually make it. So, another bill, H110, would eliminate strikes and impose terms in connection with collective bargaining for teachers and school administrators' contracts. So, the school strike, because they don't like the proposed contract, that would be out. Uh, I'm not really sure what the thinking behind that is. I know there are some people who believe that uh, schools belong in somewhat in the same category as, uh, as police and fire and public transit uh, and other, other uh, uh, groups of workers who are, are not allowed to strike but, but uh, are, receive other benefits. So, uh, of interest, to all Vermonters, but especially Montpelier residents, I think. H109, Dewey Day. This Dewey Day, this H109, would designate October 12th every year as Dewey Day, after U.S. Admiral George Dewey, the only person to, to attain the rank of Admiral of the U.S. Navy, was born and raised in Montpelier. He was a renowned U.S. Navy hero whose military leadership resulted in the destruction of the Spanish fleet in Manila Bay in the Philippines during the Spanish-American War. The original Dewey Day celebration occurred in Montpelier on October 12, 1899. And in recent years, there's been an attempt to kind of uh, bring that back. Uh, I do know a little bit about George Dewey. When, I, when I'm giving tours of the State House, I like to tell groups of children that as a, as a boy, George Dewey would stand at the top of the steps of the State House, blindfold himself, and then run as fast as he could down the steps and out across the street to his father's house, his father being uh, Julius Dewey, the founder of National Life. So a wild kid, this young George Dewey. Uh, but sometimes uh, a wild kid grows up into being a, a courageous man. Lieutenant Commander Dewey in the Civil War was on board a, a ship that was sinking, and the captain had ordered abandoned ship, but there were four men stuck below decks on a burning ship, and Lieutenant Commander Dewey went down below decks on that burning, sinking ship and rescued those four men. So maybe the, the wild kid became the, the brave man who became really Vermont's most famous naval officer. Okay. Uh, on a more contemporary vein, H-103 would restructure drug possession laws to make possession of marijuana, cocaine, LSD, heroin, and other illegal drugs a misdemeanor. That's right. Possession of Coke, LSD, heroin, other hard drugs, a misdemeanor while keeping possession with intent to sell as a felony. So this is the 
it's not just marijuana anymore move in the Vermont State House, where other drugs, uh, harder drugs, uh, most people will consider to be more, more serious addictive drugs, uh, are now being um, proposed to be moved into uh, just a misdemeanor. So the, the process of, of uh, the decriminalization now of the harder drugs has begun. And that has been proposed by most of the members of the House Judiciary Committee. The House Judiciary is a very interesting committee, has a lot of Chittenden County people on it, and they are uh, generally very motivated to do a lot of the more, what are considered to be the more progressive things. Uh, uh, marijuana, uh, the <coughs> um, some of the, uh, the immigration, uh, legislation, uh, it often comes out of judiciary, and Berlin's old or Berlin's own uh, legislator and Northfield's uh, Ken Gosselin is on that committee. Uh, so I hope at some point on a future show to give him a call and he can give us a sort of an update on what his committee is doing. Uh, a similar law, or bill, by also by judiciary legislators, would limit drug-related criminal liability and civil forfeiture. In other words, we take your car because it had drugs in it. Civil forfeiture actions against persons associated with an approved safer drug consumption program. So if there's a, if there are part of this program that says, well, they were using or possessing a safer drug then the forfeiture and the criminal liability uh, would, would be limited. So again, it's all part of this trend to uh, reduce the, the criminal aspect of drug possession in Vermont. H99 would ban the sale of protected animal parts or products. So that's a, a rhino, an elephant, uh, if you happen to, someone, your, your neighbor says, hey, I've got a great rhino horn for sale, I'll give you a good deal, uh, that would be against the law. H91, this comes to the contentious issue of the carbon tax or carbon taxation. H91 would enable Vermont to participate in a multi-state cap and trade program for greenhouse gas emissions caused by transportation, heating, cooling, and ventilation. A cap and trade program, to put it really simply, you put say nine or 10 states together and the states that are producing the most greenhouse gas emissions have to pay the states that aren't. So Vermont is actually part of a, of a cap and trade system right now for electricity generators. And of course, Vermont, you know, we don't have any smokestacks or very, very, very few uh, smokestacks for, for power companies. We don't have any coal plants, uh, very little in the way of, of uh, fossil fuel electricity generation. So we do really, really well. We make like a million bucks a year from these other states uh, combined about that. And that money goes into our energy efficiency, efficiency Vermont, weatherization. Now the problem here is that this talks about transportation. Well, and on transportation, Vermont is actually has the highest percentage of greenhouse gas emissions for transportation of any of the, any of the other northeastern states who would be part of this multi-state thing. So we would end up paying, it, it seems, common sense would say, we would be likely to end up paying them. Um, our, there will be some sort of fee or taxation on you as the driver, as the, uh, as the homeowner heating with, with heating fuel, propane. Uh, you would be paying extra because so oh, New Jersey or some other state in the Northeast does really well in this area and you would, you'd be paying them. 
the, the whole idea, of course, is to get everyone to use less. So it's kind of a sort of a force prevention. Raise the cost, maybe people use less. Now, here's a problem with that. Let's say that home heating oil becomes too expensive for people to use. Now in Vermont, in July 1, we started using really clean heating oil. It's called uh, OSHO, uh, ultra low sulfur. As of, as of July 1 this year, all heating oil sold in Vermont has like almost no particulate matter, very little. Really, really clean stuff. If suddenly that becomes too expensive or discouraged, what are most Vermonters going to do? Well, some, some folks will get a nice pellet system or a heat pump, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great for the environment. A lot of other people, though, are going to use their wood stove. They're maybe not quite so energy efficient and, and uh, clean uh, wood stove. So we have to think about the real world consequences of, of uh, putting a big tax on, on fossil fuels. What will Vermonters do if we do that? Uh, and oh, there's, there, there's, a, uh, there's a Trump bill here, uh, H88, an act relating to requiring a presidential candidate to disclose federal tax returns in order to be placed on the presidential primary and general election ballots. I think they're talking about President Trump there. They want to see his, his tax returns. Uh, don't know if that'll pass, don't know how, how effective it would be if it did pass. But uh, that does tell you there are some legislators there who who want to see those tax returns. H90 requires, this is about hunting and guns and gun safety, requires the Department of Fish and Wildlife to assist public and independent schools interested in offering hunter education courses. Which sounds pretty straightforward, right? What could be wrong with uh, fish and wildlife and other gun experts teaching hunter safety to children who want to learn. I was overhearing a conversation yesterday where apparently there are legislators who do not like that idea, who do not want either uh, private groups or fish and wildlife to be coming into schools and teaching about gun safety. It's not that they don't like safety, they're all for safety, it's the gun part that they don't like. And so we'll see where this, where this bill goes and in, in uh, future editions of Vermont State House Headliners, uh, I'll try to follow that bill and other gun safety bills. H81 defines milk defines milk as, quote, the pure lacteal secretion of hooved animals. Of course, we make a lot of milk in Vermont, so this is important. And I think there's some concern, maybe that uh, they're calling uh, almond milk milk and hemp seed milk milk. And so they, they want to get a little distance between good old Vermont milk and these other products. Um, I did have a, uh, one of my readers uh, respond with, with the question, uh, uh, what would the savants in the state house have us call the fluid produced by lactating mothers, those without cloven hooves? That's a good question. What would we call breast milk then? Anyway, uh, H80 authorizes a gun suppressor, a, a silencer, while hunting and provides hearing protection for persons while hunting. And this is an interesting bill in that the sponsors for this bill, there is a, a doctor who is very concerned about hearing loss and there is a strong supporter of 
gun rights and hunting rights. And they have gotten together. I, I think these two individuals probably don't often vote together on things or work together on legislation, but on this one, they found common cause. And that does happen sometimes in the legislature where, uh, where opposites attract and they, they come together over an issue and they work together. This would be one of those bills. Act 46, there are about six bills regarding Act 46. That's the, the forced school district merger law. Uh, Act set, Bill 78 would place a moratorium on school district mergers ordered by the State Board of Education until these legal issues are adjudicated. As you may know, Act 46 is, is facing a, a, a legal challenge in Vermont courts. Uh, the plaintiffs are very concerned that uh, towns are being forced to close schools, sell schools, sell school property, also take on debt of less uh, financially strong districts that they've been forced into a merger to, uh, and just the whole imposition of this by the state board. And they, they're concerned that the, the law perhaps wasn't very clear on the state board having the authority to impose consolidation as much as it is doing. Uh, and they're very concerned that once the, the financial funds of, of school districts are merged and their investments are merged and their accounts receivable and everything all merged, uh, as one lawyer said, it's going to be a real rat's nest to straighten out. So they want that moratorium because uh, that, that day of required mergers is coming very soon. I think it's July 1 of this year. And they, they want more time to work on this and straighten it out. Plastics. Plastics. Uh, for those of us of a certain age who enjoyed the movie The Graduate, one of the key lines there is the, the hero of the story has someone come up to him and says, my boy, just remember one word, plastics. And back then it was sort of like a good thing. You want to get into the plastics industry. There's a bunch of plastic bills in introduced into this, le this legislature, and none of them like plastics. It's mostly they're, they're really concerned about plastic getting into the waste stream. Uh, for example, um, H-74 would prohibit restaurants from providing carryout bags, plastic carryout bags, expanded polystyrene food service products, and plastic straws. These would be banned under H-74. Uh, a local bill, uh, Representative Tommy Waltz of Barrie uh, has H-73 to approve amendments to the charter of the city of Barrie. Uh, the way that works is the city votes on something, say at the previous city meeting, and then the legislature has to approve or not approve those proposed charter amendments because that's just how our government works, that a municipal charter change needs to be approved by the legislature. So uh, for you Barry residents, we'll be watching that. H-53 would establish the crime of disturbing the legislature with punishment of fine and or jail. We've had some, leg some, uh, some protesters coming into the House of Representatives and yelling and carrying on and uh, perhaps requiring more security and the legislators uh, don't like that. And so there is this bill that would, that would say, uh, you do that, you're going to uh, pay a fine or do the time. Uh, from Barry Town, you have representatives uh, Rob LeClaire and Topper McFawn uh, another charter change uh, that would add gender inclusive language for town officers to the charter of the town of Barrie. All of these, by the way, you can look up on the Vermont General Assembly website. Just Google Vermont legislature and up it'll come. It's, it's quite user friendly and you can learn uh, almost, almost everything that you've heard 
is available um, on the website. We've had a pretty, pretty tough January, right? A lot of snow, a lot of ice. Maybe this is where this one's coming from. Uh, H65 requires removal of snow and ice from vehicles operated on public highways. So you people who just turn on the car, clean off the windshield a little bit, and go racing off and you're a blizzard for the first two miles for the people behind you, mm, if this law passes, you, uh, you, you might get pulled over for that. H68 provides up to two consecutive hours of paid leave so that employees may vote in primary and general elections held in Vermont and on town meeting day. Interesting idea. A lot of people say, hey, we don't have time to go voting. Uh, the employers are saying, well, actually, you can usually get there before or after. It's not like the lines are all that long for most elections. The sponsor for this is uh, Representative Nader Hashim, who is the first state trooper, uh, in, currently employed state trooper, to be elected to the legislature. He's out of Westminster, down over by the Connecticut River. Another plastic bill. H-50 requires that when a person installs a buoy, dock, or floating structure on state waters, expanded polystyrene flotation foam shall be encapsulated by protective covering or shall be designed to prevent foam from disintegrating into the water. It would also prohibit nearby sale, like at a marina, of non-encapsulated polystyrene foam products. So those white styrofoam bumpers, no, those, those would go under this bill. Uh, I've talked some about gun control. Uh, this bill, H49, is about knife control, or saying no knife control. This would prohibit municipalities from passing any ordinance or about possession, ownership, uh, sale, carrying of a knife. So it's trying to carve out some uh, knife rights there. Representative Pat Brennan from Colchester. H-48 would raise the tax rate by $1.25 on a pack of cigarettes. Representative George Till, the doctor from Underhill. Uh, for those of you who are interested in sports betting, the, a brand new, uh, a, a young legislator uh, would create a sports betting study committee to examine legalizing, regulating, and taxing sports betting and to prepare legislation that will provide for gradual legalization. Back on the highway, uh, this H-38 would authorize primary enforcement of the adult safety belt law. Right now, a cop can't just look at you and say, whoop, you don't have your seatbelt on. He, if, if, if you're driving by, he can't stop you just for that. He needs to stop you for something else, and then if he happens to see that you don't have your seatbelt on, he can give you a ticket, click it or ticket. What this law would do is, if at any point the police officer notices that you don't have a seatbelt on, he can ticket you. Another plastic bill, uh, H-33 would charge 10 cents for each disposable carry-out bag used by a person for carrying goods, food, or other products. Well, I see that we are out of time. Got plenty more to talk about. Next week, we'll talk about some more bills and maybe some progress on some of these other ones. Hope it's been interesting. I would appreciate your feedback. Thank you very much.